Hi, my name is Josh Waringa, and I work with Dr. McDaniel this summer on icosahedral viruses. So here is a picture of an electron microscope of an icosahedral virus, just the center pentagon right here, which matches up with our main model. This is what we worked with mostly. Um, this is also part of our construction, I hope you can see that. And here is just a simple model of a virus. So our journey starts out with Dr. David Wilson at Van Andel at the same conference last year. He was working on the protrusions of these viruses, and he was wondering if elliptic geometry could apply to the viruses. And I'm here to tell you that it can. So just a disclaimer here. I know coronavirus might look like what we're working with, but it's actually a helical virus, not icosahedral. So it kind of looks like a bullet or a cigar kind of shape. Um, viruses that apply to our research is like HIV, HIV, HPV, and hepatitis. So we will start by constructing an elliptic version of the icosahedral capsid, which is the container which the virus packs its payload. Elliptic geometry is a non-Euclidean geometry closely related to spherical geometry. The disk model of the elliptic geometry allows for compass and straight edge constructions. We start with a unique disk at center O. Elliptic space is a disk and its boundary circle. Elliptic lines are diameters of the disk and arcs of circles which intersect the disk at endpoints of the diameter. Such endpoints are called antipodal points and they have the property that antipodal endpoints are, <laughs> points are treated as one point. So a particle traveling along along an elliptic line reaches the boundary and immediately arrives at the antipodal point where the particle may continue traveling in the same direction without interruption. So several elliptic lines may go through antipodal points which appear as circles with two points in common. We measure angles with tangent Euclidean lines in this model. We use spherical geometry formulas to calculate distances. In the disk we have Euclidean things which we can interpret as elliptic for instance, a Euclidean diameter of the unit disk has a Euclidean length of 2, while its elliptic length, being half the circumference of a unit sphere, is pi. Elliptic geometry allows for regular triangles with various angle sizes and it has no parallel lines. The Euclidean straight segments with endpoints at O and the circular arcs through the antipodal points all lie on elliptic lines. Elliptic segments like AB are thicker than the rest of the elliptic line AB to emphasize the parts of lines which form edges of the icosahedral faces of the capsid. Using antipodal points to allow for the outer 10 quadrilaterals and triangles to stand for the five more triangular faces, our model only shows 10 triangles, not 20. The elliptic model is built to show a hemisphere, not an entire sphere fitting these spaces with their completions on the other side of the world finishes the desired structure. Later, we will prove that each elliptic angle made of thick and thin parts is 90 degrees. The image of the inner five triangles of the virus capsid emphasizes our attempt to match the biochemical structure. We see a protuberance on each triangle. While both images look fat, flat, <laughs> each represents part of an object which when continued, closes to become an icosahedral sphere. The only complicated part of this construction is the regular Euclidean pentagon, which gives us five central angles of 72 degrees and the vertices A through E. We use the vertices of the pentagon A, B, C, D, E as centers of circles through opposite consecutive vertices. Drawing in segments from O to each vertex gives us five inner elliptic triangles, which are regular with angles 72 degrees. Now we need to do a little trick to get what we want. We start off by extending two non-consecutive sides to meet at N. We use N and the other four such points as centers for five more circles, this time through two opposite non-consecutive vertices. We then find an opposite pair of circular arcs one arc through consecutive vertices, one through non-consecutive, but with centers on the same extended diameter of circle O. Arcs CD and BE meet at point L, the spot we need for the radius of our boundary circle. Our trick was to make the boundary circle last all, 
and all our arcs inside the boundary are now elliptic lines, which completes our final capsule. Now we have to prove that the triangles are congruent. Luckily, in elliptic geometry, there is only one size triangle at all angles 72 degrees, so we don't have to hassle with side lengths. So as an example of how we work this summer, let's establish that CLB is 90 degrees. Okay. So we need to prove that A star LA is a right angle. So we start off with A star A squared, which is right here, and it equals A star O plus OA squared. Now we expand this formula into this, and by reflection we replace OA with OZ. Now we replace the middle term with 2OL squared, and we simplify into here. And with the Pythagorean theorem, we can say A star O squared plus OL squared equals A star L squared. And we can do this by Pythagorean theorem, OL squared plus OA squared equals AL squared. Now, we have A star A squared, which is right here, the hypotenuse, equals A star L squared, right here, the long side, and plus AL squared, right here, equals, they equal each other which forces this to be a 90 degree angle. Here's an enhanced version of our model. Our lines BE and CD meet at right angle of the boundary. This means in each elliptic line which contains the side of a triangle also contains the altitude of another triangle. Each elliptic line in our model contains the pole of another line. And a pole is any line through the pole given on a line is perpendicular to the given line. All the poles of any line through A are elliptic collinear. L sub A is that line, called the polar of A. The polars of vertices are not lines of the Kapsen model. Polars like L sub A are elliptic lines and protrusions lie on such lines. In sub, such images of viruses, the protrusions could be located on these poles. So mathematicians can use the elliptic structure to understand some biochemical facts about capsids. The construction is so easy with only two sizes of the radius for the compass that we cannot help but feel the construction has something to do with the success of that Casabitro fire structure. The shaded triangle in the, is a building block of biocapsids. We'll call him Mr. Grip. It, he is called a capsule. The point H sub AE is the orthocenter of triangle OAE. Then the triangles OAH sub AE, OEH sub AE, and AEH sub AE are ellipti elliptically congruent. They are all capsids. They form the building blocks of the capsid. When an infected cell produces capsomeres, these triangles want to fit together so much that the capsids can form in vitro. Mathematically, pairs or trios of these units fit easily and combine to form large parts of the capsid in a few moves. The capsomeres don't know geometry, but they're built with size and curvature to form a ball, like very quickly. It, the process terminates in an icosahedral sphere. In a study of one icosahedral virus, hepatitis B, the capsids formed so quickly that 90% of them did not have the RNA inside, so it formed so quickly that it might not even be a functional virus. So all the right angles on the board are exactly 90 degrees on the capsid itself. Some of these angles like don't appear at, like, at all, but nevertheless, all of these right angles suggest a durability in the capsid structure, which will contribute to the capsid success. They also imply a uniformity, like graph paper for a capsid. The lines and angles we could have something to do with structure inside the capsid as well, because we have seen some matched structures on the outside. So one thing we wondered is, what's significant about the center of Pentagon? Could we have like a hexagon or any other side of polygon that's over five sides, have it repeat and still complete the capsid? And the answer is no. Pentagon is the perfect, the perfect polygon. Yeah, as you can see here, here is the pentagon in our model. These match up. A repeating pentagon structure completes the capsid without any extra needed material. If you use the hexagon instead of the pentagon, you would need um, like a rhombus to finish the capsid, which would be in the, like virus evolution, that's it's not you wouldn't want that. You want to have the easiest, most the, like the easiest capsid to form just to survive. So that was a brief summary of our paper. I'd like to thank 
um, the Muller Thompson uh, director, <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth Jensen, my advisor, Dr. McDaniel, of course his ferret, Coco Bananas, and my axolotl, Bertram. <laughs>